That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. All right. More than 50 years ago, these pictures were plastered across TV screens across the world. American innovation and technology reaching new heights. Today, a new generation of space flight is hoping to plant its flag in the sand as NASA prepares the spacecraft Odysseus, which is right now inching, actually barreling closer down to the surface of the moon. But a navigation systems issue has forced them to change course. Okay, here we are. The lander will now use an experimental technology developed by NASA using laser beams to try and land safely. And if it arrives safely down to the surface of the moon, it will be the very first private spacecraft to land and the first American mission since the Apollos. Joining us now for this incredibly exciting moment is Leroy Chow, a former NASA astronaut and International Space Station commander. Leroy, thanks so much for being here. Uh, this is a huge deal and it's hugely difficult. Uh, the company involved, so this is like hitting a golf ball, golf ball in New York and landing it in a hole in Los Angeles. Is that a good analogy? Well, it's, uh, you know, the moon is almost a quarter of a million miles away, so it's certainly not a bad analogy. Uh, of course, this, as you pointed out earlier, this is something we did over 50 years ago, uh, but this will be a first for a number of reasons. As you pointed out also, this is uh, since 1972, the U.S. has not put anything on the moon. And this, if successful, will be the first commercial company to have created a spacecraft that it actually soft landed on the moon. Several others have tried over the last yeah. uh, fairly recently. And even uh, some countries, notably Russia, uh, a few months ago failed uh, to land a probe on the moon. So yeah, Russia and Japan, Russia and Japan both tried. Both their spaceships crashed. Last month, another company tried and failed. No <clears throat> private companies managed to do this. Why are these soft landings so hard? Well, it is because partially because the distance of the moon, it is that far away. You've got a complex orbital mechanics to figure out uh, your instruments. It's important that you're able to measure accurately, you know, where you are. And, uh, you know, there, as you as you mentioned, there was a an unknown guidance issue or some kind of sensor issue. And so they've gone to using the uh, the laser range finder. So hopefully that'll work out. I'm rooting for these guys. Up until now, their mission has been flawless. So hopefully they'll get down and uh, do their soft landing. Yeah, it would be a shame if in the last moments of this mission, uh, it all falls apart. Uh, the soft landing is supposed to be on the south pole of the moon. It's never been done before there. The landings on, on the moon in the past have been in different locations. But the south pole is where water and ice have been found. And that's hugely significant. Well, that's right. And actually, India did successfully, just, just recently, a few months ago, did successfully land on the South Pole, land a, a small spacecraft. So, uh, but, but you're right. This is where NASA is interested in exploring and establishing a future lunar base for astronauts to do work down there, research work, uh, because partially there, we believe, or we found evidence of water, uh, frozen water ice there. Uh, Shackleton Crater is near the South Pole. It's, uh, you know, in the bottom of that crater. It never sees sunlight, so it stays very cold. Uh, but however, you're not out of range of the Earth. That is the place where NASA is looking to explore. Always has a line of sight with the Earth, so you're always able to keep communication with the Mission Control Center. Uh, so these, these landers are setting the stage, kind of characterizing the environment, uh, doing some measurements and demonstrating their capability to help supply a future moon base. So really exciting stuff. These are the first steps. Yeah, both China and the U.S. have been trying to land in this location. So how big a deal is it that NASA and Intuitive Machines may, have, may succeed in, gosh, in the next half an hour or fail? Right. Yeah, sure. No, it, it's a huge deal. Uh, this is a new model. You know, NASA uh, kind of used the same model they did with uh, SpaceX to you know, create the Dragon spacecraft that has been regularly now uh, bringing astronauts to and from the station and even longer bringing cargo up and down from the station. And so using that same model, that commercial model, uh, they are using that to create this family of landers and hopefully this one will be successful, but they're certainly not the only players in you know, this area. Yeah, and this is all with an aim toward uh, putting man back on the moon again, uh, hopefully by 2020. 26, I believe it is. Why has it been 50 years? Like, why did it all stop? What happened? 
Well, after we won the space race and put humans on the moon and, you know, flew several missions there, the political reason for going there ended. And as you as you know, all decisions in, in life uh, are usually driven by politics. And so, uh, you know, we've had the technology, obviously, to do it, but we haven't had the, uh, the, the real reason to go. Right. And it is not inexpensive. So. No, it's not. All right, Leroy Chow, uh, great to have you here. We'll be watching with you uh, with bated breath. Hopefully this works. Hopefully it lands. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Uh, thanks so much for being here with us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.